This is the Lost Man Podcast, where we embrace the challenges and triumphs of being a modern man in the middle years. Join us as we explore the rugged path of growing older, wiser and bolder in a world that's constantly changing. I'm your host, John. And I'm Matt. And together we'll navigate this uncharted territory with grit, humour and a whole lot of heart. That's off Anchor Man, that. Is it? Unique New York. Unique <laughs> New York. <laughs> bloopers. Uh, bloopers. Blue- man has had a coffee. Man, man is feeling good. good. Man has had a coffee. Man's a feeling Lost good. Lost man has had a coffee. Lost man is feeling good. <laughs> Lost man has had a coffee. Lost man is feeling good. Welcome back to the Lost Man podcast, episode 00009. Today, we are focusing on side hustles as part of our new year motivational episodes and topics we're going with side hustles what are they how could you implement them how could you earn yourself a bit of extra cash and all things side hustle really yeah perfect uh so welcome back to the podcast my name is lost man matt this is lost man john what's up just want to say subscribe and follow the channel if you're tuning in, if you're one of our regular listeners, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button uh, so you don't miss an episode. Um, but as always, Johnny, how has your week been? So week one back on the scene, January, uh, you know, um, and it's, I like this week, particularly this year, because it's been very neat. You know what I mean? Like, Monday was on the 1st. Was it on the 1st? Yeah, didn't which you, I like. Friday was the 5th, today's the 6th. So, uh, yeah, really good. First week back at work. It was a bit of a weird... I don't know why, for some reason, this week, it felt like... I had a nice break, but it felt like the end of the break was very abrupt. You know, back mm. in work on the 2nd of Jan mm. felt a bit like a shock to the system. Yeah. And I think that's because... Um, the past few years, New Year's Day has landed on a weekend. I was just going to say, if it lands on or, or on like, even a, like a Friday, you then get the, the day New of Year's loop. Day and then a weekend to kind of recover. Yes. Whereas I actually got a bit, I got myself muddled up with our food delivery. Yeah. Because I ordered it and then I thought it was coming and, and but because New Year's Day I thought was a, in my head was a Sunday. Yeah, I just got myself kind of muddled up at yeah, the start. Yeah, of the week. yeah, 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 yeah. Did you get? Did you get it? Sorted? I got it. Got it sorted, mate. All right, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no, 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 that's fine. Got it sorted. Yeah. Yeah. It just okay. arrived a day earlier than I thought it was going to arrive. Oh God! So it wasn't a bad thing. No. Um, I actually have been looking at getting food delivered now after having that conversation with you about get food, how it is mate. the most. Uh, but there's some. The only thing is, <clears throat> and I will come back to how my week was in a minute. But this is an interesting little side topic that isn't interesting at all, is do you not find that every now and then you get a bit of fresh produce that had you been and bought it yourself, you might have got one with a better date on <sighs> It's a problem. It's this a is, big this problem. Is, this is what I suppose naysayers of is online it? shopping say. Um, not online shop, online food shopping. Yeah. I th- oh, you know, it doesn't always come fresh or... I find generally... It does. Akado, shout out Akado. Um, but what you have to, what you can do is make you just return it all. Not return it, you just get a refund on it. Yeah, you if can anything say anything is remotely yeah. wrong with it. Yeah, then they just sort it. Don't refund. They? That's a good point. Actually. I refund at least one item each delivery. Do you? And do you get any substitute items in? The odd one, but generally stuff that's. A substitute's not a problem. Yeah. It's when they when you don't get it at all. Right. And you're like, oh, oh. I would have took a substitute. It's an important ingredient. Yeah. yeah. But um, um but yeah, just just you just return it. No questions asked, no photos. Mm. I don't take the piss with it. Mm. it mm. It's genuine. Like mm. maybe it's not every time, but most times yeah. it's either something is missing or yeah. um, you know, something's damaged. So that's that's kind of where you rule that. So mm-hmm. if you're not happy with the quality, you just you just say it was mouldy or crushed or whatever. Yeah. 
and you still get to eat it. Yeah. But it wasn't as nice. Mm, mm, mm. A Kado mate, organic. Mm, mm. And the other, I know, I know, I've ranted at you loads on this, but the other positives are you're not wandering around. One time gain. Yeah. So how long does it take you to go to the shop and do a shop? Mm -hmm. So for me, probably near enough two hours by yeah. the time I've But that's because of location. Yeah, but the, the, loca the location drive is only 15 minutes away. Okay. So it's not, it's about an hour. Okay, an hour and a half. Yeah. And then go for a coffee and a kick or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Tie it into something else. Yeah. So save on fuel. Yeah. Save, I don't know why I use my little finger there. No. Save on fuel. Yeah, yeah. Save on fuel. Save your time, how much is your time worth? Yeah. And it just gets delivered. Yeah. And you can just do repeat shop. So yeah. pretty, like if you're a man of habit like me, yeah. you can just literally, uh, it's just repeat, boom. Yeah. One button and then maybe add or, add or minus a few things. Right, okay. Well, also, that... Akedo does an organic, which I rate, I believe in what you, you were just saying before about sugar. Yeah. But what you put in your body matters. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's worth paying that bit extra. Mm. And sometimes it's not even that much more. Mm. I can tell that you feel particularly passionate about this subject. The, the, I feel passionate about organic subject. food and food delivery because I think, <clears throat> I, and you don't walk around buying random shit. I don't know if I've already said that. You don't walk around the supermarket buying random stuff that mm. you don't want. Mm. And you always go to the supermarket when you're hungry, which is just never a good idea. I never realised it had such a, such a I place. Do, I do feel passionate about it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I feel passionate about organic food. Yeah. And I feel passionate about not wasting my time walking around a supermarket. Love that. Um, perhaps that could, and perhaps getting little freebies here and there could could weave its way into you know we can kind of like tenuously link that to side hustles. <laughs> you know. um, but my week has been good. First week back, yeah. So starting to get to grips with the new job a little bit. I feel like um, you know, and I think I think for me, I've had a couple of moments where I've been like, oh, you know, because it is a sharp learning curve when you first start a new mm. job, um, and. You know, you want to just be able to just grab hold of it, but I think there's an important message in that, which is, you know, if you're starting somewhere new, and I'm I'm reading this book called Mastery at the moment um, by a guy called I think he's called Robert Green, um, and that talks about this a lot, which is he was on the Andrew Huberman podcast. He was on the sure. Andrew yeah, Huberman, yeah, yeah. Po Huberman podcast, and he um, he talks a lot about. Um, well, the point of the book that I'm in at the moment is the, the first phase of mastery, which is basically a huge education piece. And it's about just sitting back and taking in the information and not trying to run before you can walk because there's a lot of risk of you be like opening yourself up to looking like a bit of a knob if you don't fully understand something or, um, you know, uh, but also looking a bit cocky as if you know mm, if you do really like overcompensate yeah exactly yeah, or, yeah. or or even like you have to be very mindful like in the beginning of a job you have to be very mindful about the relationships that you're building as well because mm. you're going to be um, you know there might be people in there so for example you know you might go to somewhere where you've worked at a company that's a bit bigger or you've worked at a company where the processes are a bit different or the whatever might be a little bit you know better or um, different and you kind of swing in with your big size tens mm. and say well shouldn't you be doing it like this and I don't mm. think and you can mm. piss people off yeah, doing it that way. Yeah easily piss people off. Mate. So I think the stage that I'm in with the job at the moment is very much a uh, porous like you know just sit uh, what what is it that that uh, Will says see all hear all say now mm. type thing and mm. just take it in you know and and um but with that said, started to lead conversations with a couple of the clients that I've got, started to have a bit of a, a, particularly from an operational point of view, which is what I'm good at, is looking at some of the processes and think, and just thinking at the moment and just talking to a couple of people going, this is my perception of this, uh, mm. this, this particular process. Do you think that that's true? Do you think that there's gaps between certain teams and are there people pulling in different directions where we're trying to achieve the same thing? Yes, there are. Okay, all right, cool. I'll just think about that and um, siding up to the right people, basically. And and um, I think that you know, in a new job, there's always going to be people who've got little bugbears, and you know, some of those will be valid, and some of those will just be 
weird politics. Um, Do you think that is a, you know what you were saying, just going back to what you were saying about, you know, going into somewhere and being like too assertive. Mm. Do you think that's a young person's, and when I say young, I mean like, do you think if you, when you're younger, you're, not you, but generally you're inclined to do that a bit more? I think, I think young people, have, I think young people probably have more of a propensity to feel like they've got something to prove. Um, but I don't know whether that's exclusively, uh, you know, younger people. I think anybody feel like I feel like that to a degree. Um, I, I had it at, at work recently where, where one of the, we, obviously I was off on paternity leave and then I went back and they'd hired a new like trainee teacher, NQT. I don't know what they call them now. And, uh, he would like, he'd been overseeing something that I was oversee. And I came back and he was like, but oh, now you need to do this, now you need to do this. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. And I was just like, I'm like literally been doing this for 15 years. Yeah, You're yeah, kind yeah. of like, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be na rude or nasty. Yeah. So I was just like, all oh, right, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, th I think there's probably lessons on both sides, isn't there? Because I think it's easy to be dismissive and get stuck in your ways and perhaps perhaps yeah. a new way of doing things is a better way. Yeah. And I think that um, that's one of the things that I've realised that I'm quite, that I feel like I'm okay at um, is, and, and it's probably quite a lot easier for somebody new to go in and see somewhere where efficiencies can be made. Because when you're in it, when you're in it and you've been in it for years, you're so close to something. And also it's the whole kind of like, it's easier to just keep doing it the way that it's been done well, the whole time. That's exactly like at the cottage where we, we've had this with the cleaners and like having like gins check the holiday cottage mm. after the cleaners, mm. it's like a second set of eyes on yeah. something mm. and mm. it just takes that small break or different kind mm. of way mm. of looking at it. Mm. Mm. And obviously in that case, you pick up dirt, but yeah. in, in your case, you know, I you, I you might it, pick up. I think that's really important for anything. Like I think a lot of, I think that's why I could never be a writer, like as in somebody who writes novels or really long papers that are kind of for um, sort of, you know, broad public consumption. Because as I understand it though, you know, it's a painstaking process anyway to write a really long piece of a story or mm. a, or a really long self-help book or any of those different kinds of things. And it has to go through such a big kind of, um, you know, a Q and A process, you know, sort of, and I just find that, I, I would Have you ever tried find that a really laborious. Uh, no, I've had a few ideas for books. But this is the this is the format that's yes. suitable for me. Yes, to be I, I with you. tried to, I I I had great visions of writing a book. Yeah. Of, of just, a bit a bit like why we've done the podcast. You yeah. know, like little tidbits of information that I've found useful. Yeah. Um, being an expert in none of it, yeah, but just of little things that have impacted me in a positive way. I thought, oh, maybe I should. And I think it was in COVID, mm. and I started writing. And I think I got about a page in yeah. and realised that I sound like a five-year-old. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I, my name is Matt. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. am a teacher. Yeah, I like blue cars and <laughs> elephants. Yeah. I think so some at people that point, are born with... I just deleted yeah. the file. But I did it for a couple of, like, I probably did it for, well, my theory was to just do, like, five minutes every day. Mm. And I did that for... I don't know, a couple of weeks mm. and did about a page, a, a page and a half, and maybe like two very short chapters mm. and then just realised it was actually big respect to people that write because it's actually very hard to make it sound good. I think the reason why that, that kind of came into my head as like an example of something which, you know, has to go through a few stages of process and refinement and a lot and it's a laborious process is because, so as you know, I've got friends who are writers, Charlotte and Peter Thiel, and we work together on a side hustle project. Yeah. Now, mm. getting good at mate, these, so mate. good at these. That was so, so good. good. 
But um, but it's actually that's actually going to be a segue, but then a reverse back reverse into how's back. your week been. Yeah. So it's just a little t- more of a teaser. I'll do a very quick weekly round. Okay, fine. But um, with Charlotte and Peter, uh, yeah, I mean those guys have written books on the history of design, the most collectible cars in the world, the most collectible watches in the world, pieces about fashion, historical pieces about architecture, beautifully Products. crafted. Prod, What's yeah. funny about that is that I, you were like, have you heard of these people that do, do these Titian, Titian books? Tashin. Tashin. And I was like, mate, I've literally got every one. Yeah, because yeah. At, at uni, that was, that was our source material. Yeah. So uh, I see it firsthand because they, you know, they've just been through the process of writing this, um, this, the most collectible watches in the world book. And they've been to some amazing places and they've had access to like, the vaults of, you know, the historical vaults of Rolex and Omega and all these different kind of things and had, you know, Elvis's watch in their, you know, Elvis's Omega watch in their hands. and um, But anyway, the point is, um, yeah, it's, and you, and you have to be a bit of a lunatic, I think. I think it's mm. quite a cursed profession, mm. you know, where there's lots of, like Stephen King famously said that he doesn't remember writing loads of his books because mm. he was so off his banana. Oh, right, uh, shit. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's how the week... The week has been pretty much occupied with that. Um, I have stuck to my 9pm bedtime routine, apart from I had a slip yesterday evening, which was a Friday, so I'm not that frustrated. Um, and the reason that it happened was because I went to watch the new Ferrari movie, yeah. which was good. Oh, right, nice. Really what, good. What good? Yeah. Or was it like... No, it was good. It was just good. And the reason for that... It, what is it, like a historical documentary or is it a, like a, a dramatised film? It's, a, it, it's basically a period drama, which ev- everything seems to be a period yeah. drama at the moment. You know, there's a new Priscilla movie coming out about Elvis's wife, who we just mentioned. John's, John's 30 second review, go. Could have been more cars in it, was a lot of backstory about Enzo Ferrari, but was very well acted, very well shot, very stylish, um, and the cars were beautiful, and um, I got more into it as the film progressed, because the first hour is basically a lot of context and not a lot of racing, which is what I was expecting. I was expecting something like the Ford versus Ferrari movie with Christian Bale and Matt Damon. Yes, which was very good. Very good. Very good film. Excellent, I would say. But it's a little bit more context, stylish. And obviously because it's, you know, the Ferrari family are Italian, there's lots of that about it as well. Like sepia tones in the the camera work. Yeah. um, lots of fiery behaviour from yeah. Penelope Cruz, but brilliant acting. I, I'd give it so. Give it, a, give it a seven point two out of ten. Yeah, seven point two out of ten. I think we should do that on the regular. Okay. Uh, seven point out of ten for what was the film called? Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so slips, we, slips on the sleep target for one night, but generally that's okay. That's but that'll be yeah, back on that's, track tonight. That's, that's fine, mate. You allowed those little slips. So went to see the Ferrari movie. So let's uh, handbrake straight into <laughs> how your week has been. Uh, my week, New Year's. When did we last meet? We met on New Year's Eve, didn't we? We, did. we met on New Year's Eve. My week has involved seeing my mum and dad, seeing a bit of family. Um, that was nice. Nice little event over at my parents' house. And then... What was nice about it? Just spending a bit of time with them. Just nice. Yeah. It was all of us together. Me, uh, my brother, my sister, their, all, all the various children, mm. uh, mum and dad. Mum and dad put on a good Christmassy kind of meal. Wait, would that, would that be Rob, our biggest fan, Rob? Rob, our biggest fan, Rob. Love you, Rob. Um, funny, one of, oh, mate, one of the funniest times I've spent with my family in years. Because? Because, out of nowhere, Rob's dog, Waffle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And mum's, which is a Bichon Freeze Summit. Waffle is. Yeah. Yeah. And that, so kind of like. That reminds me of a side hustle. Do you remember Waffle? Yeah. <laughs> remember, that? remember that? To be continued. Yeah, we'll discuss it a bit. Uh, and then my mum's dog, which is one of those little rat dog terriers. Yeah. 
thought they were fighting underneath the table, yeah. Waffle had actually fully docked. No. Fully docked. No. With the rat dog. And it is a male-female situation. It's a male-female situation. Yeah. Waffle has no testicles. Yeah. Ronnie's getting excited. What, what are you doing in here, Ronnie? Um, Waffle's got no testicles. Ronnie, go to the living room now. No. No, no not listening. He's okay. Um, Waffle has no testicles. Yeah. Bella, yeah. the terrier, was on heat. Yeah. So she, she was on a rag. Yeah, yeah. And she, she had... But towards the end of it, anyway, it... Full dot, full back to back docking, mate. And ro I didn't see Waffle's penis. Back to back docking. Yeah, that they were like back to back. Yeah, like not doggy style. Not 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 doggy style. And then it was just like Reverse screaming. Engineering. And then Rob was like, "What's going on?" And then he could see Waffle's willy, and he and he said it was lich. You know, like the sh you know, like Ronnie's sheath. Yeah. T another sheath. Yeah. Less. It was long. Yeah. But but then if you think about it, it's got to go through, under, yeah, and in. Yeah. And they were they were connected for I don't know, 10, 10 15 minutes. And apparently they were connected for fifteen minutes. Yeah, mate. That's what happens. I've never witnessed this in my life. They were they were they were do he was docked. <laughs> I'm not making this up. He was docked for. I'd say 10 or 15 minutes and, and everybody... Information for all you dog breeders out yeah. there who want to do that as a side hustle. Yeah. They, they, were, they were docked and uh, yeah, it was just... Every, Mum was freaking out and started trying to pull them apart. Yeah. And you were like, no, you can't do that because you'll rip his dick off. Yeah. And then my sister who has bred her dog yeah. was like, no, 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 you need to now, like both owners need to relax the dogs. Yeah. And, and basically once they've relaxed he will undock. Right. Because I think the dog's penis has like barbs on it or something, no. or a screw or something. No, I think it has like a little, no. Oh, it does, I've, mate. Well, well, I've seen but Ronnie's. Google at some point. Yeah. No, but but when it's, at, you, you will have only seen the tip. Yeah. But they go, because Rob said that about Waffle. He see, he's only seen his tip before. Yeah. Anyway, and, and my mum, everybody was traumatised, mate. It was, it, it was like, it was like, well, mum was treating it as if Waffle had abused her dog. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, I sent you that picture of mum's dog. Yeah. Right little hussy, mate. Yeah. She was like humping everything the night before. Yeah, yeah. Humping everything. Yeah. Anyway, so that was funny. That was, it just, it just made for a really funny family. Yes. Like, Sum up a family kind of yeah, yeah, cha yeah, chaotic yeah, yeah, Christmas yeah, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog, uh, dog And then what else have we done? Filmed new video for Van Life. Mega. Filmed new video for Van Life. Just in the process of editing that. So that will go out either t tomorrow or the day after. Um, we went for a nice little wander, talking about our wheel and tire upgrade. We went for a nice little coffee and a cake. Try and, I got a little bit of feedback on my last video, which was like, oh, it would have been great to see what you got up to in Aberystwyth. So like, I'm trying to put a little bit of- Yeah, more personalized. Personal, yeah. but also still quite informa inf informatic? Yeah. Is that a word? Informative. Inf informative. Yeah. A bit more informative in terms of like, what tires and wheels we've gone for, what's the impact on MPG, yada, yada, yada. That's about it, that's my week. Oh, that wrist sounds... is feeling, wrist is settled down. I love that. Ten, Do it with that ten, hand. Tentative. Skadunk. Tentative fist bump. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, so good. That's good really Positive good. Positive week. And I think, uh, you know, um, that van life thing that you're doing, this thing that we're doing here, we've got a few other bits and bobs that both of us do that kind of have the potential to generate us more income or are just and interesting from a learning point of view and I think that that's why we believe that maybe we can have a bit of an opinion on the what what feels like could possibly be word of 2023 
Side hustles. It feels like everybody has something going on. It feels like a very popular thing. There's recently been a tax launched specifically for side hustles, which you can talk about a little little bit bit more. Um, But I think that where's a good place to land with this? Well, I think we start by saying, what is a side hustle? So answer, because I'm going to sneeze. Sneeze off screen. Sneeze off screen. I'm going to freeze frame that. <laughs> I feel cheated when I do a sneeze like that because yeah, I'm like, like I want the full... In a, wow. in a sneeze, yeah. Uh, well, we thought as part of our January positivity month, because yeah. we wanted to kind of kickstart January with a series of positive podcasts, Yes, we, would, we wanted to talk about side hustles and well aware that everybody is feeling the pinch at the moment. Yep. Everybody is certainly feeling the pinch, cost of living crisis, all that bollocks. Uh, but instead of bitching and moaning about it, why not turn that energy... What's the solution? What is the solution? Yeah. yeah. What is the solution to that? And and if you don't want to move job or you, you can't see it, an easier way to up your income through um, your, your the job you've got, your existing job why not consider a side hustle? 100%. So my my thoughts on a side hustle, or what is a side hustle we wanted to start with, didn't yeah. we? And, uh, you know, I think it is anything that you can do on the side that could earn you a little bit of extra cash. Yeah. And that could be... Does it have to be monetary? Can it be about learning or have the potential to grow into something yeah, that can pay you? Something, I think so. Something, it could be, could be something with a long-term goal, a, yeah. bit, a bit like this podcast perhaps, yeah. that is like at the moment maybe not a side hustle, but it could turn uh-huh. into one. But something that, it could be another job, mm-hmm. could be picking up some additional work somewhere. And there's lots of different ways you can do that. And you, you've got some good ideas on that that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, it could be setting up something. It could be kind of selling something. Yeah. Um, it could be providing a little goods or ser- you know a little service to somebody and, yeah. and, and making a little bit of cash. But essentially, a way of boosting your income. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know these things as well have potential to turn into actual businesses. 100%. And I think it is a way of boosting your income. I think it's also potentially a way of, um, you know, we're very much of the opinion that it is a uh, work to live, not live to work world. And with that in mind, um, you know, wouldn't it be lovely if you could turn something that you enjoy doing into a thing that brings you income. And I know that's not bloody rocket science and that's, you know, nothing, nothing's uh, revolutionary about that idea. But um, what it could also be is, you know, working out a way to turn something that you love into something that brings you money. And I can remember having a conversation with my dad over the new year, actually, because I've got to admire the bloke. You know, he has been able to carve out... You know, it's kind of like his hobby, slight side mm. hustle, and all kinds of things have merged into a, a career where he's been able to work with his passion, which is cars, for mm. his whole life. And that's actually, mm. you know, when you go to your deathbed or when you look back on your life, I think that's something to be really proud of. To be honest with you, um, I was driving when I was driving over, and I was thinking about the, the topic and this podcast. I, I, your dad popped into my head and I yeah. thought, you know what, I bet that started as a bit of a side hustle, yeah. as a bit of like, oh, maybe I'll buy and sell that car, do it up or whatever and, and, and move it on. And then obviously it's turned into mm-hmm. a, a, he's you know, he's done well out of it, to be fair. He's done great out of it yeah. and he's been able to do some exciting things and his life has been one of experience rather than um, vast wealth. And I don't mean that he hasn't made money off it because he's of made course money, he has. He? Yeah, he's made but good what money. I mean is, is like, um, you know, he hasn't. We haven't got like generational wealth to pass no. on down the family. Um, but he has been able to have experiences that um, other people, you, you know. Tr- and I think I live my life like this a little bit, like real bucket list experiences. When I think about, mm. you know, 
the kind of adventures that I go on, and he's exactly the same. But you're dead right, it definitely was a side hustle. The very brief timeline of events was he was an engineer, he worked on the QE2, he left there, um, went into business with a guy who had a um, property uh, business, like an estate agent, it's called Bridgefords, which everybody's heard of, of course, and he went and worked there for a bit, but was selling cars on the yeah, side. Yeah. And then he he went from there, you know, there, there came a, an opening at an auctioneer's, a car auctioneer's, and he gave in his notice, and then that job didn't materialise. So he was like, well, why don't I just do this myself? And that, that side hustle yeah, turned yeah, into yeah. his main career. Yeah. So, um, and I, I, I do have, you know, I, I think it can be something that can be, you know, you, you can focus on your passion and hopefully turn that into something that brings you income. But I also think that depending on what type of brain you have, and I have this type of brain where, um, you know, diagnose um, ADD, that's fine. But the point being that you can actually, that's not always, you know, it's always got a negative connotation. It's like, oh, you can't concentrate on more than one thing. It's like, okay, right, well, let's do a few things and try and do them well. Yeah, as long as yeah, there's some, yeah. as long as there's some, um, there's some structure around that. And, and I call it ADD income or ad income. It's a yeah. nice little brand. And what, yeah. what I mean by that is, is having a few different little revenue streams that are bringing, and, and I tell you what, mate, they soon add up. Yeah, mate, so of course for they example, do. Of course I, they do. I, speaking personally, I have my day job, which is my nine to five, which makes me, you know, an okay income definitely yeah. an income that yeah. i could live on and i yeah. wouldn't need to do anything else yeah. which would be fine but but would you say an income that that you just live on so it's like actually being able to maybe save yeah and do the things you want to do mm. would be difficult to do on that income it, of course it would be more restrictive than not having the additional income but i could i could if i you know if i really was um, you know, and we'll ha we'll do a separate money episode. But if I was as structured with stuff like that as you can be, then um, yeah, it would be okay. I mean, um, but it's definitely you know the whole can money buy you happiness thing. Well, it can definitely buy you freedom. You yeah, know, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, so that's that. But I think I started to get more serious about this probably the middle of last year because um, things were happening that were out of my control with my old, with my old job I was a little bit like oh not this again mm. and you start to think to yourself I really want to and this is the other good thing about side hustles is is that it's very much within your sphere of control yes a lot more so yes. than if you're kind of like at the mercy of a business yes so I started to think I was like and I can remember having the conversation with somebody I was like I'm sick of this bullshit um well because 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 if you've just got one income revenue from a major employer you are just at the mercy of them mm -hmm. and if you get made redundant or that business goes under mm -hmm. or whatever happens you are then solely reliant on that income yeah whereas if you kind of segregate it up and you've got your main job plus your kind of a couple of other income streams mm -hmm. then actually being made redundant necessarily yeah it's still an issue but it's not like shit, what am I going to do for money And what, next it, what, month? It, what it allows you to do is, is it allows you to uh, mitigate the risk of something like that happening. So say, for example, if you get made redundant from somewhere and let's say you've not been there for... Because I think the rules are now that you have to have been somewhere for two years to have any leg to stand on whatsoever. Like, in theory, even though you start a new job and you pass your probation, mm. they could actually turn around and say, do you know what, business performance is down, you've not been performing... You've got no leg to stand on mm. from a legal point of view. So all the, all the chips do sit with the employer in that respect. And, and for me, when it came to the redundancy with the last job, I just started to think about, um, you know, I, I suppose you get to a point where you're like, is this what I really want to do? Am I, am I, like, I'm progressing in this lane, but is this lane the actual right lane that mm. I want to do? So what having my couple of little side hustles, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, uh, did, 
allowed me the time to just take a couple of months off and just breathe yeah, and go, yeah, right, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. And not have to oh, like nice. go from the frying pan to the fire and yeah. shit, I need to get another yeah, job today yeah, yeah. and then go and work for another company. And then 12 months later, you're like, oh, what am I doing here? Yeah. I could pick and choose who I went to work yes. with to the point where I was in a lucky position of having a couple of job offers yeah, that yeah. actually signed and sealed. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to actually go into one, test the water with yeah. it, and then unfortunately let the other company down at the last yeah. minute. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, sorry, yeah, guys. that was bad, and I, you know, wouldn't recommend. Yeah, but that. at the end of the day, you got to do what's right. You've got for to you. look after number one. And this is what I said to, to them. And, and and if if the shoe had been on the other foot, and priorities had changed at their end, would they have given a toss about pulling the rug? Maybe like, mate, they would not give an. Exactly. You know what, mate? My the the like I've always said this about where I work. Sometimes you feel like priority number 10. You do not feel like they really care. No. You know, you, you, you don't get a, you know, like you make it in, you're hanging out with some horrendous man flu. Mm. Nobody thanks you for it. Of course they don't. No one, no one goes, ah, oh, mate, oh, you look like shit, thanks for coming in. Of course, No one thanks you. Mm. So you, well, it's just, you just don't feel like a, yeah valued you don't feel valued no and so that, that, that's the one thing that i found about working in corporate environments as well so working at sky and, and particularly working at Booper, and um, when i was starting off as a marketer you know you are just there to move along their shitty blocks and then that's it but give anyway back you, to the back to the subject at hand give us your side give us your so, current side hustle setup. so i have a couple of development hustles and a yeah. couple of direct income nice. hustles. Okay. Yeah. So my direct income hustles, they probably equate to about 450 quid extra a month. Yeah. yeah? So uh, when you say that to yourself, and, and there's, there's only two that are actually bringing me revenue, um, and those are the dog boarding business. Yeah. And what's the other one? You sell, you sell, a, you sell a few of your clothes. That's on, right. There's online. like, there's like a lot of yeah. So, so I was lucky enough as part of an old business to have access to loads of product samples for shoots that I was doing. I used to work in the fashion business, um, and they kind of product samples sit in this grey area in between. You know, that it's brand new product, yeah, but nobody wants it, yeah. Um, and it's labelled up and tagged and ready to go. And, and it's almost like this unspoken word. Like what do you do with it? What do you do yeah, with it? What, what do and you... you see this with, with bike companies, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember, I remember we, had, we were chatting about this while ago, weren't I? That like, it was just a video I watched on YouTube where it was like, obviously when a company releases a new part or a new bike, yeah. it goes round, Yeah, goes ra- does, does the rounds maybe, yeah. maybe less so like products you might get, they might send it to a lot of people, whereas with a bike they move them round and then it kind of gets to the end of the year and it's like, do they want the bike back? Yeah. Do yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. does it just get stripped down and mm-hmm. disappear off? And mm-hmm. it's kind of just a weird gray area of whose bike is this? Is yeah. it on loan or mm. has it been given? Mm-hmm. Who kind of owns it? And ultimately, what do you do with totally. those, those bits? But I tell you, there's an interesting learning in that. So, 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 so they're mine and a couple of other tell us, bits. Tell us about your, tell us more about the dog. So the, do, the, the dog, dog, the dog boarding the website was, and stuff yeah, like that. The dog boarding was an interesting one because very short story I went to Norway in May of 2023 and I, like everything left left uh, boarding Ronnie to the last minute and he normally goes back to the kennels where I originally got him from which is great you know they love him there and all that kind of stuff but because it was a bank holiday I couldn't get him in and you wouldn't believe how busy kennels can be around that sort of yeah, May Day bank yeah, holiday yeah. I literally no lie called and emailed around 40 or 50 boarding kennels wow. and not one of them you had a space. Asked, you even asked us. Was asking friends. You were asking for, yeah, 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 yeah. Friends, family to sort it out. And I never do that. And um, anyway. Which for the record, we would have took Ronnie had we not got a little baby at the time. Yeah. So, um, uh, where was I going with that then? Mine's well, you, gone blank. You, uh, anyway, so yeah, so managed to find a kennels and, I, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we've got spaces. And in my head, not alarm bells, why have you got spaces? It was amazing, can't believe it, name your price. Yeah. Anyway, so turned up there, and it was this horrendous, I, I can't really uh, describe it, how 
uh, you know, but it was just dirty, like a porter cabin, basically, with like these horrible kennels on the yeah. side. And I, I knew as I was, go I was like giving Ronnie over, I was like, oh, you will be careful. Yeah, he'll be, f oh, okay. Went away the next day and it completely ruined the ruined holiday. Ruined your holiday. Um, anyway, so came back, picked him up. He was ill, kennel cough, sh you know, shitting everywhere. Is that, is it? Oh, it was rough, mate. Did it? It was really oh, bad. Oh, shit. It was really? really bad, yeah. That's bad, that, isn't it? And, what, so you just picked up some DMV or something yeah, from... Yeah, as soon as I put, as soon as I, as soon as I pulled, Ronnie. as soon as I pulled him out of the kennels, we walked up the hill to the car and he just explosively shit all over the thing. <laughs> so I just left it. I was like, forget you guys. Um, anyway, anyway. So the next time I went away, I thought I'm never doing that again. And I found this app called Rover. And I was like, bloody hell, why don't I do this? Because I was working from home most of the time. Yeah. Um, you know, and you can charge depending on the quality of the service. But, you know, not only does it provide an extra income, it's, it's, it's a social thing for Ronnie. It's really actually yeah, quite Ronnie a Yeah, Ronnie loves it, doesn't he? He loves it. It's really actually quite a fulfilling thing from a um, customer service point of view. You know, so a lot of my customers are... You know, people in the local area who, who you know how people get about their dogs, you know, who wouldn't even dream oh, of... Oh, mate, yeah. I, I would be very careful who we left our yeah. dog with, definitely. And, and it's made me, you know, it's made me realise that, you know, uh, uh, almost like a little bit, it could be a little bit of a calling. Like, if I was to hit it big, or if I was to, you know, make, make enough money to be able to retire at 50 or something, then there's definitely a, you know... I'd quite like the idea yeah, of having yeah. a dog sanctuary, yeah, something yeah. like that. Anyway, well, what's so, nice about your? I'll just plug John's uh, John's do dog sanctuary for lonely dogs. Mm. Is you, you're a big walker hiker? Yeah. So they get loads of fizz. You know, when when dogs come to see you, you can take, especially like at weekends and things, mm. take them out in the Peak District for a nice walk, which yeah. is which yeah. is lovely. They which get a lot a great... of the owners seem to really. Vibe. They get a great mm. service, and and a, and a big thing is the fact that Ronnie Ronnie is a big selling point as well because it's been beautiful to see how he sort of dials up and dials down his temperament based on the kind of dog that's yeah. there. He's really it's really amazing to see him read them as soon as he comes in, and then he'll either wrestle, play. It's play. like an alpha off, isn't there, straight away? Yeah, which he always wins. Yeah, he always wins, and, yeah. and it's his. But house. he's super gentle. Super gentle. Like, I'd say with my dog, she can be a bit of a cow yeah and a bit aggy with dogs coming into yeah. the space yeah whereas ronnie is very welcoming yeah mm. but the other the other thing as well is is talking about the clothes thing so i won't go too deep into that but what i would say is is that there are for people out there who are thinking about how can i make a bit of extra cash there are ways to t that, that there's things out there like vintage like ebay and again i know this isn't rocket science we're not talking about revolutionary thinking but there are ways to just buy and sell bits of product. You'd be surprised. But buy mate. and sell and or just start with selling all of your shit that, that you, you don't, don't use want or be, don't use. And another thing you'd be amazed by is, is what kind of stuff people on Vintage yeah. would buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and even if it's just like raggy old All Saints t-shirts that you don't wear anymore, someone will give you seven quid for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's you know, like free and they pay shipping. They pay the shipping. Yeah. And, you know, the theme of the Lost Man podcast is compounding interest. And that's yeah. a great example yeah, of that. Yeah. Because if you think, oh, it's only seven quid, what's the point? It's like, yeah, but I've got ten of them. Oh, no, 70, 70 quid. quid. All yeah, oh, right, yeah. well, that's a week's fuel. Yeah, yeah. And it starts to turn like yeah. that, doesn't it? You know? Mate, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good one for selling things that we don't use. I've usually got something on eBay and, and Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. I would just say Facebook Marketplace is a absolute minefield. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Full of pricks, full of scammers. Mm. But all I would say is if you're selling say I'm happy to accept PayPal goods and services, which means it's insured for the, um, the, you, the buyer. Yeah. And they take something like a, a couple of percent out of your fee. So you yeah. can just add that on if you want. Mm -hmm. um, and in my experience, if you do that, it's, pre it's pretty safe. Yeah. Um, and also, always, if someone's not willing to pay you through that service, they're not. It's not legit. Mm, like, it's mm. so easy. I don't know how people get scammed mm, on mm, uh, 
on Facebook Marketplace because it's so easy to tell mm, a scammer. Mm, mm. You know, it's so blatant. Mm. All you need to say is, do you accept goods and services? Mm. Yes. Mm. Or, you know, if there's no, they don't, it's, it's a load of crap. Mm, mm. Um, so, so that's that. And I think the, the other couple, and I'll just go, I'll talk very pretty quickly about these because I've spoken about them a few times on other podcasts. But I think a, another sort of message or thing that I've learned is that, you know, side hustles or being entrepreneurial or any of those things, it isn't about, you know, how academically bright you are. Um, it's about, spotting opportunities when they come along your way and you know well how can I turn this into something Mm. and I'll give you an example so I've got two sort of little businesses which are bubbling away one of them is a furniture e-commerce business which is the stuff with Charlotte and Peter Fiel that I mentioned before and the other is a uh, fashion business going back into that and going back into that world and uh, you know they have Huge potential, particularly the fashion one. You know that's mm. moving along at a rate of knots, and you know, and you know, we both have plans to uh, potentially leave our current day jobs by the end of this year, don't yeah. we? You know, we spoke about this in the goal setting podcast last week, um, and the British attire um, coming soon to uh, uh, you know computer near you um, is. Moving along, uh, as I say, at a great rate of speed. And, you know, we've got products that's now bought. We're working with brands like Barber, Hunter, Peregrine, Napa Piri, Stutterheim, Reigns, uh, you know, Penelope Chilvers, Le Chameau, Aria, Aigler, loads of different brands. Um, and it is all about that British attitude to style. You know, there is definitely a gap in the marketplace for this this product and this um, this e-commerce opportunity that that is very um, that's very ambitious though. Mm. But but I think the message is that you can start doing something, and it will you know it could compound into something bigger. Well, what I was going to lead on to like that that is quite unique that proposition yes. because we have such a history yeah. in it, and obviously the people that I'm working with are so well financed, yeah. and we can start it up on our own. Yeah. So not everybody will have access to that. But what, where I was going with the sort of the, yeah. the entrepreneurial side of it and being able to spot opportunities was the thing with Charlotte and Peter, that, so the furniture business, the way that started was when I, when I used to work um, full time, my day job was the fashion thing. I did a really small documentary on the history of denim and... and through a, through a series of contacts, Charlotte mm. came into my life as the person who could present that because she was a real strong authority on the history of style and all yeah. these different kinds of things. So we shot the documentary with her and then it came off the back of that where she sent me an email and just said, oh, I've got something that we'd like to talk to you about. Um, okay, yeah. And I just thought they wanted me to sell their books for them through yeah. the, the business that I was working for. Um So it was funny because I joined the call with my day job hat on and I had a member of my team on that call as well. And Charlotte and her husband, Peter Fiel, joined. And they started talking to me about the idea. And I was, as as it was going along, I was trying to think about what it was that they were trying to say to me. And I was, and then after a while, I was like, oh, hang on a minute. You're kind of like angling this. Propositioning you. this, This is like... Not so much that it was like they were they, they were trying to they were trying to say could because the business that I worked for was owned by a group which had a number of e-commerce faces within it and they were trying to say let's bring in furniture into that portfolio of mm-hmm. e-commerce businesses but my brain was like this is too much of a gem to give to those mm-hmm. guys mm-hmm. you know which and the reason Gosh, that, yeah, the reason that, gifting them a. The reason that my brain was like that was because they were pure e-commerce and it was very much like a stack em high, sell em cheap mentality, whereas this idea was a very premium proposition. So, um, and this this is what I mean about entrepreneurial spirit. You don't have to be somebody who's a brainiac, who's changing the world or who's super academic. It's about going, hang on a minute, what, how can I leverage this and being brave about it and being able to say, because Charlotte and Peter are pretty much bloody famous. And, yeah. and, you know, and for me to, you know, say, well, actually, let's go this way and, and just bootstrap it ourselves and invest time, you know, because 
Um, you know, we speak about this. You don't want to be a busy fool, but sometimes you do just have to go, well, actually, no, it is 16 well, hour weeks. Yeah. Well, I think what the, the, the kind of message there is that there's side hustles that are kind of short term, short sighted, instant cash. Yeah. Kind of, can I buy and could I buy and sell something? Could I offer a service, walk a dog, whatever it is, for a cash payment? Or. Could that side hustle be okay? I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm gonna kind of crack on at my day job, and I'm not gonna earn immediate cash from this. But it could potentially lead to, in a year's time, with putting the effort in, a side hustle. Exactly that, and that's exactly where I'm coming from with this idea of ADD income. It's about having a few different ideas bubbling away that have got a framework around them. Some of them are short-term play. Yeah. Some of them are long-term play. Some of them are consistent, like yeah. your day job and looking at things in that way. Um, so that would be my sort of roundup on my, my portfolio of side hustles. You had a really successful one. And, uh, you know, because we, we used to speak a lot about what are we going to do? And do you remember that night that we had around my house? <laughs> we, we literally had a night round at my house, at my old flat. Pissed out of our brains. Pissed out of our brains. And we wrote down the things that we were good at. And it yeah. was like riding pooing <laughs> and, and I swear to God this was the this was the list which just goes to show what Did knobs you, we were in yeah. that day um, um, well so. I suppose I I again coming back to that thing about a, do, kind of monetizing or capital capitalizing on something that you either you enjoy or you're good at mm -hmm. and um, we were doing our house up and we didn't have any money, so we were just doing it all ourselves. And the wife being all into interior designing and looking at, you know, like nice looking interiors, she wanted a million dollar house on a thimble budget. So she wanted some concrete worktops and she wanted some concrete halves. Um, obviously, I'm quite practical, so, you know, I thought, right. I'll have a go at this. Mm. Can't be that hard. Chuck mm. a bit of concrete in a in a mould. Off you go. So I made the half a half for the fire, and I made the the worktops. And that wasn't without trial and error. Like that, there was a lot of error, a lot of getting it wrong. But we got something. What was that, the error? The the, the bonding, oh, cracking, yeah. cracking, not filling the mould fully. Mm -hmm. Whole loads of pinholes. Um, I mean, the ones that we put into the house are rough now they look they're they're ready but they were kind of like mark two of concrete polished concrete but they look kind and of rust, rough yeah there's i feel like there's a point in which rustic looking concrete just looks shit mm -hmm. and, it, and they're getting towards that point okay but yeah so started doing that and then the guy that was fitting our fire was like where did you get that from mm. and i was like I made it. And he was like, would, would you make those for us? And, uh, you know, we've been asked before about those. Would you make them for us? And I went, well, yeah, like, you know, uh, come to me. And I'll... so in, my, in, in the garage, in the workshop where we re record the podcast yeah. usually, you know, I'm lucky that it's a nice size garage. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I started, I started making um, concrete halves and mm. selling them and then I started making concrete worktops for people and selling them and so at that point it was very much a side hustle mm. and then what I actually did um, was invest in myself which is a good little mm -hmm. tip bit and I went on a what I realized was what I was making looked great but was not durable and I had a situation where I'd made this beautiful, huge hearth for this fire, got into a fire, a, you know, like a stove shop. And um, basically between transport, like dropping it off and it being fitted, it got trashed. The product wasn't durable enough. So I found a, a course, uh, shout out to Tony at Polkry, if you're ever looking for a, a polished concrete supplier or training and uh, paid to go on a course. So it was about grand. Um, luckily, um, I'd already decided at that point to pursue it a little bit, so I dropped down a day at school and it fell on the right days. And then 
um, yeah, went on that course and, and they showed me a much better mix of concrete. Like a, it was almost like composite material. And then, um, yeah, I, I, I started making really, really nice polished concrete and um, making sinks, making worktops. And then I dropped down another day. So at this point- At it, your day job. At my day job. At this point, I'm, and, and still I'm working three days teaching. And I was doing concrete, you know, on the side as well. And um, it was doing well. Mm. Like it was m more than paying what I'd lost in income. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, And you learned things about, um, you know, dealing with customers, getting better at making the product. But you also built, sat down with the digital side of yeah, things and so built a website. I built a couple of websites. I built one website mm -hmm. and realized it was shite. Mm -hmm. And then I built another website, which was all right. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I, I, when you're setting up a little side hustle or a, or a business or you, I think, I feel like unless you've got a load of money behind you, which I didn't, mm -hmm. you have to be a social media specialist you have to be able to design a website you have to be right, able to copy be good with yeah, branding yeah yeah, yeah get up, imagery come, yeah i did it all like yeah. uh, between me and gins we did it all and um and all of those things might feel hard at first but very quickly you get used to how the things work don't you you're never going to be an expert no, per se but, but and you might not, have a particular leaning in a certain area but it's cool to just you never know you know you're finding out things that you Mate, the knowledge is out there. It's of all on it YouTube. Yeah. It's all on yeah. the internet. Yeah. Like there's, there's never been so much knowledge out there yeah. just for you to access. And you just have to, like, I'm not a, um, I don't always agree with paying for online courses mm. because half of the time that information is out there for mm. free. You just mm. perhaps, you can't even guarantee paying for a course the quality of the information. Mm. Um, but if you do your research and find some good people that, or good mentors through mm. Facebook groups or whatever, mm. you can find the good information. Mm. So that was good, really. And then the only reason I stopped doing that was 50% because I smashed myself up on my mountain bike mm -hmm. and 50% because we had a baby and we realized that the smell... The fumes, All that dust the is quite dust toxic, and the it? fumes that, were, that some of the chem the chemicals were getting more and more chemically, yeah, and like smelly, and I didn't like one using them, yeah. and two they were coming into the house yeah. because it's obviously attached to our house, yeah. So so that was it, but that was a, it was a good side hustle, and um, where I felt I really enjoyed doing, it. I enjoyed making things. Um, where I, where if perhaps maybe I could go back was that I certainly feel like using the internet more as part of a business is, can be quite powerful mm -hmm. and, um, depends how, how much you want to get out of your side hustle. But if you want to kind of scale it with that business model, it was dependent on what I could make, which was quite difficult to scale up like there was a limit of how much I could make per month um, so yeah and then really that's my the main thing I've done and then now what I'm focusing on is my YouTube which a bit like you were saying and the podcast these are things that you don't monetize them immediately mm -hmm. but within a year or two years mm -hmm. with consistency mm -hmm. You know, I love that saying that it's it's not the person that's the best at it, it's the person that's most consistent wins. Mm, mm. And, um, you know, I would hope that they are able to fund or part fund my life mm, a little bit. Mm. Um, but then I suppose other, uh, other, other things I've been doing are uh, just like you, buying and uh, selling stuff. Mm, so mm. just going through my house and, and selling off bits of, like, I bought, ooh, bought a drone mm, for van life mm, mm, mm. but I, I was like i'm not buying i'm not spending money on that that i've earned yeah i want to yeah recycle recycle my money yeah and so i sold you know a load of old mountain bike parts mm. and things like just like lying around mm. uh, just to fund it and mm. that was the only way 
Um, that's that's what I did with that PC that I bought. Um, I just kind of sold off a few bits. I can't remember what they were now. An iPad, a couple of other bits yeah, like that just, that came to. Yeah. Um, it adds up though, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, 100 quid here, 100 quid there, 50 quid here. Totally. Mate, I had some old ski boots. Like, yeah, I'm talking gotcha. like 10 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tried skiing, did it for a year or two. Tried snowboarding, much preferred snowboarding. Mm, mm. So I, they were in all, they were still pretty bad. Mm. Mate, I got like seventy quid for them. Amazing. They're like one hundred and twenty quid, brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. It's amazing what people pay. Um, there's there's different shades of it, isn't there? Like we've said a couple of times, you know, it's stuff that's going to make you direct cash, and the stuff that you could. Yeah, there's like, also stuff where you like back yourself a little bit and just go out and learn something with yeah. no real like plan for it, like the PT course yeah, that I did, yeah. which was just like. Well, I never really went and got a trade. Um, that's something that I know a lot about and it'll be good information for me to have just for me. But then if the world did blow up and AI takes over all of our um, white collar jobs, then having something like that yeah. in your back pocket is yeah. going to be really important. But the one that you've, that you've not spoken about, which is a big source of income for you, which is the... the, the uh, the holiday cottage. I mean, yeah, that's that, a huge high yeah, side Yeah, you know hustle. what? I was just going to... I just remembered about something I did in my 20s that I thought was pretty good, which was um, I was teaching full-time, and teaching wage in mid-20s was, was really not great. Mm. Like, I was scratching around for cash all the time. And I went in... Uh, one of... A, a chap <coughs> I know... Oh, no. A chap Ginny knew said, oh, I could do with a bit of help at the weekend. So I started doing some, like, handy... I wasn't even that handy at that point. Like, just doing some general painting, like, for this chap on, like, a... Ca yeah, like, removing fireplaces. Yeah, and so I remember just, when you were yeah, doing just that, kind yeah. of, like, helping him. He was restoring his house. It was basically just helping him out on yeah. the weekend. There was a guy that... And he used to pay me something like 50 quid a weekend, 60 quid... Sorry, yeah. 60 quid a day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like shy of 10 quid an hour, eight yeah. quid an hour or yeah. something. And, um, you know, like that, like with your dog walking, that just paid for my fuel and it meant that I could try and save stuff because I was desperately trying to buy my wife an engagement ring. Yes. And I couldn't say, I literally couldn't say, and I wasn't, it's not like we were going out on the mm. weekend every week, mm. you know, not living lavishly at all. Mm. And I really wanted to get an engagement ring and that is how I did that. Mm. But through that, and this is what you were saying about meeting people. And I met a guy called Dave who was a builder, like mass, you know, those guys that just couldn't do it all. Mm. Met him, he was working there, started doing weekends for him as well. He was paying me like a slightly better wage. And then, but not, uh, but what was more valuable was that I actually learned how to restore, like do a house up, mm -hmm. like so much. Mm -hmm. I learned how to plasterboard. I learned how to brick, like do brickwork. Mm -hmm. I learned how to do basic wiring, mm -hmm. like literally how to renovate a house mm -hmm. from working. A, I did a couple of years in the mm -hmm. end working with Dave. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Which then led to you being able to do what you've done. Uh, Whatever it's called. Well, I'm glad you got it wrong. What's it um, called? I'm not telling you. Right. Not yeah. on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, and yeah, it's led to being able to do other houses up, which is what we've done. Yeah. And then, yeah, holiday let. I mean, I wouldn't, I'd say that is a side hustle, but also that's, that is from, you know, we've been fortunate enough to buy one house. We did it up. We added some value to it. We then took that money out and we bought another, we remortgaged it, took the money out and bought another house. Yeah. And um, we were able to then move into the new house, keep the old house and, We've now rented that as a holiday lair, yeah. which I mean, it, when it was, it was just rented as a house, and it barely, like, it was making very little money. Yeah. But now it's a holiday let. I would say when it was rented as a private letting, it was fairly passive. So yeah. you take the rent, you pay the mortgage on it. Mm. With it's now a holiday let. It's been really successful, really busy. Um, Ginny did a great job designing it. I like to think I did an all right job doing it up. And uh, yeah, but it, that isn't without its work though. Of course. That's not passive. It is very much, we are there three times a week. Mm -hmm. I'm on the emails all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but that's okay. We're it's not a, saying it's a that business, side it's a business are passive that. It's turned into a business. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. So 
lots of things you can do yeah. to side hustle your way a little bit of extra cash this mm. year, especially when it's miserable outside, you know, mm. and you mm. can't get out and explore. One thing I did just want to touch on was that side hustle tax. Yeah, talk about that because I don't know about this. So, so with with everything that I've actually done, I've always declared it mm. as tax taxable income. You know, apart from the odd bit of cash in hand, and actually the HMRC say that if you're not earning more than a grand cash in hand throughout the year, they're not interested yeah, anyway. Yeah. Because I remember doing one tax return from when I was working, doing a bit of cash in hand building, and they were like, "You've not earned enough. Mm. Don't, don't bother doing this." Mm. You know. Um, but everything else, like the concrete, I, I was set up as a uh, sole trader mm. as well. And then the, the Airbnb is fully taxed and all above board. Um, the side hustle tax, that, I don't know if the, what the real name for is, but that's what they've called it. Basically, the government has said that they are going to start communicating with um, popular side hustle online businesses not sure whether your dog walking one was mentioned but airbnb mm. you know like renting your spare room mm. out um mm. selling things on vinted mm. Mm. that they are going to have to share the transaction information mm. with the tax revenue mm. Mm. office hmrc and you will need to, I guess it will be the same. If you're making above X amount, mm, you'll mm. need to start declaring that. Mm. Which, to be honest, when I say, when, when I talk about side hustles and, it, and you're not, you know, you can tax them and if, you, if it's, you're only a little bit of cash, a little bit of extra spends, then yeah, that's, you don't need to. But I feel like if you're earning a couple of grand or more out of it, really, you should be probably paying tax on it. I think it's something to definitely be mindful of. And I think if, you know, depending on how people feel about that, because I feel a little bit more, uh, a little bit more like, mm, about that. But it depends on the, on the scale of it, like you say. But I think, it, you know, it's just something to be aware of because mm, that can definitely. come along and yeah, you sting don't you. Wanna, you don't, even though if you earn a couple of grand and they got you and you had to pay that extra tax, like it, it's only going to be 20% of yeah. your extra, you know, it depends what you earn to start with, but it, it's not going to be thousands of pounds. Mm. But at the end of the day, what you don't want is a tax bill at the end of the year. Yeah, I think, I think, I think as a kind of a, a, a sort of a closing point from my point of view is that all of these things are great and all of these things can, you know, be fun and can bring you in extra income. Don't but take think, financial advice from us. Uh, yeah, don't take financial <laughs> advice from us. We're not financially authorised to give advice. Definitely not. But uh, something that everybody will can probably agree on is, is if there's one person around there that you don't mess around with, it's the tax yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do it by the books because, look, if you've got to pay tax on it, what it means is you're actually making some money out of it. Mm. Mm. Um, so, yeah. I think that is that is side hustles. Did you want to touch on crypto, um, aka gambling? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, possibly not. I think that crypto is an avenue for some people if they want to go down that path. Then yeah. great, it is gambling. You can hit, you can win big, you can lose big. Yeah, um, but that would probably I don't know whether that would fall into a different no, category, yeah, yeah. would it? I think maybe we talk about it on our finance one. Yeah, that's we'll a good one. Yeah, we'll one. talk about it on the finance yeah. one. Um, but if something's too good to be true, yeah, it often is. It often is, yeah. And that's true of money, life, all kinds of different things. Um, uh, should we wrap it up? I think it's ready to yeah. be wrapped. Wrap and deliver. Wrap and go. So thank you for watching this episode of the Lost Man podcast on Side Hustles. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm John. Have a good week. This is the Lost Man Podcast, where we embrace the challenges and triumphs of being a modern man in the middle years. Join us as we explore the rugged path of growing older, wiser and bolder in a world that's constantly changing. I'm your host, John. And I'm Matt. And together we'll navigate this uncharted territory with grit, humour and a whole lot of heart.